Good morning, caregivers. It's Carol Howell with Let's Talk Dementia live on Facebook. Glad you've chosen to join me on this Thursday morning. I'm a couple, about a minute late starting. I was just sitting here doing some work and looked what time it was. Like, oh man, I'm running behind. But I'm glad that you're not and that you're here. And I hope you had a good night's rest and that you're ready for your day and all of the adventures that lie ahead. I would like to thank our sponsors, HD Import, located on Flint Street Extension. You can reach them at 803-985-0985. If you're anywhere near this part of the world and you on own a Honda, a Hyundai, a Kia, a Toyota, or an Acura, oh, they need to be your mechanics of choice. You're going to save a lot of money working with them and a lot of anxiety. Just good folks. And also, Life in the Carolinas, the wonderful television show telling you what life is like living in North and South Carolina. And you can find them at Life in the carolinas.com and on youtube life in the carolinas where it's never a bad day for a good story and if you know me you know i like a good story well mm, i was eating my breakfast i think it's stuck on my teeth that's a pretty sight isn't it <laughs> i wanted to talk with you today two things we're going to talk about today one is about visiting a male an adult male um who well, obviously an adult male who has dementia. Although, you know, there are some young folks been diagnosed with dementia. The youngest that I've ever heard of is someone in their early 20s diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's. And I think what mama's gone through is bad. Honey, that is nothing like in your 20s finding out you have Alzheimer's. Can you even imagine? It doesn't happen often, but it has happened. But anyway, talking with and interacting with an individual who has dementia is important. Your approach to them is important. Now, let me tell you what I can't stand. When before, when my mama was sitting in her lazy boy, which was not a lazy boy, but we told her it was, because um, we're good at lying through our front teeth. Um, when she would sit there and somebody would come visit and they would get down in this little squeaky voice and go, Hey, Miss Vera, how are you today? You're just so pretty. I'm like, make me puke. My mama is not five. And a five-year-old doesn't want to be talked to like that. How about coming in going, Oh, girl, you look good today. How you doing? Your hair. You did your hair different. Looks really good. Not this squeaky little oh-so-sweet voice that nobody wants to hear. Oh, my word, it just sent me over the edge. I just want y'all can leave because that is not talking to somebody. That's talking down to them. Like you think you're so much more important to them. Don't do that. First of all, get yourself down at their level. That part's good. Now we're not going to bend down and be all hunkered over like that. You're still putting yourself in authority. Pull up a chair, sit down beside of them, eye to eye, get on their dominant side. Whatever hand they write with, that's the side of their body you want to be on because they're going to respond more fully to you if you are on that dominant side. That's true no matter if they've got dementia or if it's your husband, you're trying to get him to understand something or your kids who are just being obstinate, get on their dominant side before you tell them you're gonna beat the doo-doo out of them if they don't straighten up. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> you know how kids can be, I remember. Although mine was absolutely perfect, never had a minute's trouble. Yeah, right. But get on the dominant side of your individual with dementia and just talk to them about life. And that's what I'm doing with mama. When I am with mama, um, while she was keeping her eyes open more, if I was going to the bathroom, I'd go, Mom, I'm going to go to the bathroom. When I came back, I said, Mama, I think now I'm going to, you know, fold up the blankets in here in your room. And, Mama, I think right about now I'm going to go in there and see if they've got anything cooking. And we just, I just told her, I just talked to her just as if she was going to respond to me, which, P.S., if she had of it, would have been so wonderful, but she did not. But when you are visiting an individual who is male who has dementia, in my world, that would be more difficult. And it has been when we have had male clients that we've been asked to visit with regularly. Um, what do I talk to them about? I ain't talk to female about all kinds of junk. I ain't think of a million things. But maybe it's a little more difficult for me to think of things to speak with a male about. And the reverse of that might be true. If maybe you're a male staff member and you're going to visit a female church member, you need to maybe do a little bit of research about what you're going to talk about. Have some thoughts in your brain. So for me, if I was going to visit, you know, Mr. Johnson, and I knew he was a big um, college baseball fan, then you know what I need to do. That's right. Google 
Just Google college baseball statistics. I've got it right here on my screen. I might would make a few notes and have it there in my book laying beside me and I could go, what about that Nick Gonzalez um, plays for New Mexico State? Boy, that dude, he had batting average of 432. Can you believe that? Y'all, I guess 432 is good. I don't know anything about it. I'm looking here, I'm thinking it probably is, you know. Um, he had 95 home runs. Kylie plays infield too. That's pretty cool. That Nick, he's quite impressive. I don't have a clue what I'm talking about, y'all. I just don't. But it's going to trigger potentially something in that person that I'm talking to. Maybe it's only a reaction by their face. Maybe they only smile when you talk about it. But you know, maybe you've hit on a player they like. Or if they don't respond to that one, go, what about um, Dominic? Dominic de Alessandro? Did you ever watch him? Yeah, he's doing pretty good too. See what responses you get. If you've got to Google it to get some good information, then that's why God made Google. Well, maybe he didn't make Google, but that's why we have Google. Pull up some good information. Maybe you know that your person you visited really liked Broadway music, and you don't know squat diddly about Broadway music. I have a client like that who's very much into um, Broadway musicals, and we would go and visit with her. And so on my iPad, I did some searching for Broadway musicals from the 1950s, the early 60s, and what do you think I played for her? the songs that she liked, what she was interested in. So make sure you are planning in advance and talk to them. Don't just sit there and stare at them. Don't talk around them. In other words, everybody in the room you conversate with and you leave Mr. Smith sitting there. Oh, it was Mr. Johnson, wasn't it? Well, whatever his name is <laughs> that you've come to visit, you just leave him sitting in the room and you never talk to him. Don't do that. Talk to him. Have conversation as best you can. If he is not conversating back, that's okay. You're going to still talk to him about things you know from his past. Find out where he used to work. What kind of work did he do? Was he a plumber? Then you need to talk to him about the last time you had to hire a plumber. You're not going to believe what it costs to have my toilet replaced. Holy cow. And you just go on with this story, right? It may not even be a true story. It'll make any difference. But it's something that you can have a conversation with him about, something that he's interested in. Maybe he will respond. Maybe he won't. But you still invited him into that conversation, and you didn't just sit there and stare at him. Don't do that. Don't be afraid of him. You do know, right? Please tell me you do know that dementia, that Alzheimer's, that Parkinson's, that Lewy body, um, that Huntington's, all of those are not contagious. You are not going to get dementia because you went to visit, sat close by, held hands with, was kind to somebody with dementia. So that being true, get your honey butts out and go visit somebody today. Be good to them. Believe me, they want to be included especially folks who are in the early and mid stages of their disease. They're still capable of doing lots of good junk. Up until March of this year, my mama could still have somewhat of a conversation with you. She could use throw in a dirty word or two to make you giggle. She was glad you were visit, had visited with her. And then, you know, it was always a good time. Now, it's not like that now, but my mama is actively dying. But I'm talking about you visiting with folks who are still, you know, pretty together. Go do that. You'd be surprised how much you will enjoy it. And the benefit for them is through the roof. It helps build a feeling of goodwill within, their, within themselves. It reduces anxiety and depression and tension and the chances of them wanting to wander off because they're bored or they're looking for something to stimulate themselves. You've done that for them. You didn't have to give them a pill. You didn't have to sedate them. You just talk to them. Or maybe you play music. Or maybe you put the baseball game on your iPad and let them watch some scenes from last night's game and you talked about it. Just be sensible and visit with people. It's a good thing. All right, that's my preaching on that. Now, speaking of preaching, I told you yesterday that don't y'all just love readers? I'm blind as a bat without them. <laughs> I told you yesterday that my husband and I, we um, read from this book, Maddox Lucado's God is with you every day. Wonderful book. We've read through it so many times that the, um, the, the binding here in the center is coming loose, but it's still a pretty book. I want to read to you yesterday's devotion because it just, 
when I got through reading it, I was like, Michael, this, this is where I am today. So I'm just going to read it to you. And, um, that will be the end of our show. Before I do read this, I do want to thank our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas. You can find them at lifeinthecarolinas.com and HD Imports located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. So here is the reading from Max Licato's books, book Facing the Walls of Jericho is what to that. Let me back up. The book is not called that. The book is called God is With You Every Day. It's a good thing he is because I can't even talk. The devotion is called Facing the Walls of Jericho, as written by Mr. Max Licato. The scripture is from Joshua 1.9, and it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, folks, right now in my world, there is great comfort for me knowing that, because when I show up to see my mama today, I don't know what I'm going to see. Well, that's true every day of our lives, isn't it? We never know. But this one really hit me. He says, high walls, protected sides. Joshua and his soldiers had never faced such a challenge. They had fought battles in the wilderness, but never, ever had they fought a fortified city. They had never passed this way before. Perhaps you are facing a challenge unlike any you have ever faced before. Mm -hmm. It looms on the horizon like an angry Jericho, imposing, strong. It is ancient, thick-walled, and impenetrable. It is the biggest challenge of your life. Like Joshua, you can see it. Like Joshua, you must face it. And like Joshua, you don't have to face your Jericho alone. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 5 says, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. You see, the message to Joshua was unmistakable. He said, Jericho may have its walls, but Joshua, you have more. You have God. He is with you. Isn't that all any of us need? We need to know that God is near. We are never alone. In our darkest hour, in our deepest questions, the Lord of hosts never leaves us. Hallelujah. Blessings and smiles on your caregiving journey. I'll see you Monday morning, the Lord willing. Bye-bye.